Welcome to Weld.com. Today we have a very special episode about a welding process that we've never really touched on. You're probably wondering what this thing is. Well, it's part of the safety procedures for today's welder, which is just inside. And there it is, the LightWeld XC. Not only is it the smallest, lightest handheld laser welder on the market, it also has a cleaning feature like I've never seen. You've probably seen commercials and wondered how a welder like this works and what it means for our future or our industry. Well, today we're going to talk about that and I'm going to show you all the functions and features of this new slick little machine that we have here. So this is a real challenge. I've done it before TIG welding, but it takes quite a few razors to get your heat exactly right. With this laser machine, it only took like two settings to get it figured out, and it does a really good job at doing it. So let's get started. All right, so before I show you how to set up the LightWeld XC, let's go over the safety requirements, which is somewhat unique when it comes to laser welding. Now, the first thing to know is the laser in this system is not visible to the human eye. So this is not Buck Rogers. And because the laser emit infrared light and the weld pool isn't as bright as something like TIG, you might be tempted to let your guard down. But make no mistake, the hazards to your eyes and skin are the same as any other process. So first thing you'll notice is that we always weld in a special laser controlled area, which is basically a light tight room that prevents any of the laser light from escaping. Outside of the laser controlled area, you want to post proper signage to let folks know not to enter. But if somebody does, you need to make sure your door has an interlock, which connects to the back of the XC right here, and it shuts it down if anyone enters the containment while welding. Now, in terms of PPE, the manufacturer supplies these safety glasses and a special hood, which you see over here. And of course, you'll want gloves, long sleeves, and proper work boots to round things out. So let's set this light weld XC up. Now, I know it may seem like it would be complex, but it's real simple. Hook up the power, which is single phase 220 here. Your gas goes here. And here's the interlock I've been talking about, which shuts off the welder when somebody enters containment. We've got it hooked up to both the welder and this wire feeder, which is optional. And of course, there's an ethernet jack. So you can hook it up to your PC to view and fine tune all the different parameters in more detail than on the front control panel. So besides being easy to set up, it's very flexible. This unit comes with a gun, spare nozzles to help with all sorts of joint configurations, cover slides, as well as safety glasses and helmet we already mentioned. The system does also come with your typical ground clamp, but in this case, it's part of the safety circuits. So there are two different options when it comes to cable length. A 16 footer I have here and a 32 footer for better mobility. For the most part, you do use the same gas as a regular welding. However, if you work on a lot of stainless, nitrogen is a great cost effective option. With the 16 foot cable I'm using today, you should typically be running between 10 and 20 PSI, while the 32 footer that needs between 15 and 32 PSI. An interesting difference to note is while a typical cable is made up of insulated copper, this cable is made up of fiber optics delivering a beam powerful enough to weld most metals up to 160 thousandths of an inch, eight gauge steel, or 10 gauge aluminum. Now let's look at the front panel here after I turn the machine on. Just like every other welder, the XC comes with presets or process modes supplied by the manufacturer, which are outlined on this handy laminated sheet. Now, of course, you can easily customize these presets for fine tuning with these knobs. Some of the perimeters here that are unique to laser welding is wobble length. This is used to control seam width. So a smaller number gives you a very narrow weld, which is good for tightly fitting parts and thin gauge material. While a higher number gives you a wider seam for parts with poor fit up. And then there's wobble frequency, which controls speed of oscillation. The basic XC package allows you to fuse material similar to TIG, but also LightWeld supplied us with this optional wire feeder for those fit ups with larger gaps. So I'll demonstrate both to show you how these processes work and it's time to weld it out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set the machine up for the three millimeter butt weld aluminum. What worked best for me, and I, I practiced on it a little bit, was the H3 mode at like 1500 watts. So let's get started.
And of course, to hold that program, you just push both buttons simultaneously. What's a little different, which you'll see here when we start welding, is that the arc is not very bright at all, which means you only need to set the hood on grind mode. So folks, that's how you see how fast it welds. It's like lightning speed. So this is the side that I welded on. And look how pretty it looks. I'm gonna flip it over and show you the penetration. I mean, it gets 100% penetration. That thing just blasts right through it. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna flip it over and put the cleaner and show you how it cleans. There you are, folks. That's how fast this machine actually works. You've seen it with your own eyes. And I'll flip it around. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna start with some stainless steel. Six millimeter thick. We're gonna do a T-joint with a one millimeter thick. I'm gonna go into the user operator. So that's zero, zero, okay? We're going to go to 800 watts. Then we're going to go to the wobble frequency, which is 220. And then the wobble length, 1.6. So as you can see, I cleaned it with a wire brush and it come out really nice and shiny. So another good thing about this laser is when you're welding thick to thin, the heat input is very minimal. And with a TIG, you'd be putting your heat all the way to the bottom, which is the thicker material and burning out the thinner material and would make it very difficult to weld, which with the laser makes it very simple, hardly any heat input, makes a nice quality weld with no distortion. So next what we're gonna do is we're going to go with stainless steel again, or we're going to do a lap joint with the wire feeder. So just like in TIG welding, you want to use a, an argon backer when you weld aluminum and stainless. You know, and of course, you can go back to your reference chart, A9 setting, and we're going to go turn the wire feeder on. So what I found out best that it runs on, I had it on 160. So we'll turn it up to 160. Of course, you change the nozzle to the wire feed nozzle. Insert the wire feed. Take a three millimeter Allen wrench. And you're ready to weld. And the wire we're gonna use today is the Bowler Avesta ER308L with the AWS spec of A5.9. So I'll go ahead and clean this up with a wire brush. Look how nice and shiny it is, and look at the quality of the weld. And what's really unique about this wire feeder is when you set it, 
it's basically driving itself because it's when it's pushing the wire, it's pushing it back, which you're pulling it with your hand, which makes it very simple to run. So th these are some samples that were sent to us from IPG that they did in their lab. And to the left there is a piece of inch and a half pipe. And you can see the butt weld there that come out really nice. And also welded the flange to it. And the flange weld come out really nice. Then to the right of it, which I've never did this before, and it's very fascinating to me, how you can take copper and weld it to stainless with that laser. I've never seen anything else do it with a rod, MIG welder, TIG welder. I've never seen it done like that. And then of course, all the way to the right, you see how the copper's butt welded together. Nice, thin, sleek little weld there. That's really slick. That welder does a really good job. And I know right now, a lot of you are probably wondering how you can get your hands on one of these and then quickly realizing maybe it's out of my reach. Because of course the XC costs more than a typical multi-process machine. But for those of you getting into the industry, especially manufacturing, pay attention because you will be running into these units and I'll tell you why. First, speed kills. As we've shown, laser welding can get the job done much faster than any other process. And hey, time is money. You know what else is a major consideration? Energy. The light weld equipment uses much less power than any other processes. And in the high production and manufacturing environment, those savings add up in a hurry. Add to that ability to weld the thinner lightweight material without warping, and it's a no-brainer for EV automotive and the aerospace industry. Last but not least is the ease of use. We need more welders if the manufacturing industry in America is gonna keep up and a product like this with a slow learning curve can certainly get new workers or even retrained workers welding faster and at a lower cost. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need help, go to our forum and connect with us at weld.com backslash forum. If you want to check out our exclusive content and member perks, join our channel and support the weld.com community. See you on the next one.